I'm Nick for Robotic Bean, and I'm here to tell you about the latest update to Step Note Recorder, version 1.1.0. This update adds some great new features to Step, including per step gate widths, per step repeat counts and repeat modes, a number of usability and workflow enhancements, and this update is of course free for existing owners of Step. Let's take a more detailed look at the new features in Step 1.1.0. As you can see, we've added a small menu to the left of the velocity link. Here you can switch between four different views of your sequence. The default view is velocity. Here, you can view and edit the velocity value of each step, just as before. What's new here is that while you're drawing the velocities, the value currently being edited is shown below the sequence. And, if you have scaled velocities using the global velocity knob, you will see both the drawn potential value and the actual scaled value. The next view is entirely new for this version, and it's called the Gate Width View. Here you can view and edit gate widths individually for each step in the sequence. The height of the blue bar represents the gate width for each step. You can drag across the bars, just as you do with velocity, and you can of course see the actual values below the sequence as well. The individual gate widths are scaled by the Global Width knob, similar to how the velocities are scaled by the Velocity knob. If you switch back to the velocity view, you'll see that the width of the velocity bars corresponds to the actual gate width of the steps. Next up, we have the repeat count view. Here we can affect the duration of each step in the sequence. The default repeat count for each step is one, and this is how step has always behaved. This means that the duration of the step corresponds to the selected resolution, or one clock pulse if you're using the clock CV input. By increasing the repeat count, you multiply the duration of the step. So a repeat count of 2 will double the duration of the step, a repeat count of 3 will triple it, and so on. The maximum repeat count is 8. You can also set the repeat count to 0, which means that the step will be skipped during playback. Note how the grid changes when we modify the repeat counts. The grid guides are recalculated on the fly, so you can always rely on them to help you line up your sequence. Another improvement for this version is that the grid guides now also take the song's time signature into account. Finally, we have the repeat mode view. The repeat mode decides how the repeat count should be handled for each step. There are four different repeat modes to choose from. Single, repeat, hold, and ratchet. The default mode is hold, which means that the note will be held through the entire repeat count. Single means the step will play on the first repeat count and will be silent for the remaining repeat counts. Repeat means that the step will be triggered for each repeat count. The last repeat mode is called Ratchet, and is different from the other modes in that it won't increase the duration of the step. Instead, it'll divide the step by the repeat count, creating a stutter-like effect. All the new per-step properties can of course be accessed from your MIDI controller using the remote protocol. We've also included a number of usability and workflow improvements in this update. You can still click and drag on the root key value to change it, just as before. But now, you can also set it using your MIDI controller. Double click on the root key value, the field will start blinking red, play a key on your MIDI controller, and see how the value changes. When you've selected the root key you want, just click the value again to save it. We've improved the root scale selector as well. Now when you click and hold on the root scale, a pop-up menu will appear, showing you all of the available scales at a glance. Just drag the mouse pointer to the one you want. We've also given you direct control over the transposition amount. In addition to the usual MIDI and CV methods of transposing the sequence, you can now click and drag directly on the transposition amount to change it. You can reset the transposition amount to zero 
by double clicking on the value. The transposition amount can also be automated. Thank you for watching.